rotating disc of the watt-hour meter has been a familiar sight for many years. From early models like this 1903 General Electric single-phase watt-hour meter to highly advanced models designed to measure today's extended electrical loads. A half century ago, when this watt-hour meter was produced, it was designed to meter electrical loads with the highest accuracy and dependability levels possible at the time. Today's meter is engineered to the same high standards, but with vastly improved design and manufacturing techniques that provide accuracy and dependability virtually undreamed of at the start of the 20th century. The floating disk employed in modern General Electric single-phase and polyphase watt-hour meters, for example, represents a tremendous step forward in watt-hour meter design. This disk literally floats free in magnetic suspension. There are no bearings to wear out. Tilt errors, which can be a major source of lost utility revenue, are virtually eliminated. And perhaps most important, sustained accuracy has been proven both by extensive lab tests and the in-service record of more than 10 million GE watt-hour meters now in the field. Watt-hour meters, which include the I-50 and I-55 single-phase units, the I-60 class 200 single-phase watt-hour meters, and the V-60 polyphase meter family. But improved product quality is only a part of the modern watt-hour meter story. Advances in design, engineering, and manufacturing have led to important cost benefits, too. So that today you get more meter for your money than ever before. Since World War II, total expenses for raw materials and labor have climbed sharply, yet meter prices have not. In fact, a single-phase meter that cost you 98 cents per kVA in 1954 cost 59 cents in 1956 and is now only 32 cents in the latest class 200 single-phase meters. This continuing record of cost leadership and high product quality reflects a quiet revolution in watt-hour meter manufacturing that has taken place in post-war years. A modern approach to meter manufacturing based on creative new production concepts. Today, at General Electric's meter department in Summersworth, New Hampshire, advanced production techniques featuring integrated automation provide a new key to quality and cost leadership. Through a continuous program of manufacturing progress, leadership in cost delivery and quality becomes an integral part of each general electric meter. By old-fashioned manufacturing methods, the expense of manufacturing this assembly would be prohibitive. But here is how, today, we can give you a lifetime bearing system. The outer suspension bearing is made up of an aluminum shell, spacers, and Elmico magnets. In automating the assembly of the outer suspension, we feed six parts, three spacers, two magnets, and the shell. The spacers and magnets are inserted and pressed into the shell, as you saw in the animated sequence. Sensing plungers are used to make sure all parts are inserted and seated properly. The shell and contents are forced through a die. The shell is drawn tightly around the spacers and magnets. The excess length is trimmed and the end of the shell is tightly rolled to complete the operation. Since the advent of this automated assembly, the quality level of this operation has been increased 300%. The next operation on the suspension system is to insert and anchor the guide pin while holding a maximum runout tolerance of two thousandths of an inch. Formerly a manual operation, a six-station rotary indexing machine is now used to automatically die-cast this pin in place. These six stations include one for feeding a guide pin into each of six mold halves as they are indexed into position. The end of the pin is bent, the shell inserted, and then engaged with a fixed mold. At this point, the molten metal is injected, and as the mold retracts, a rotary action shears the excess material. At all stations, sensing probes are used to check for pin length, bend, and location. Result? Assurance of uniform quality for each assembly. Magnetizing and stabilizing are the final operations on the outer suspension system. 
After being visually inspected, the parts are placed into a magazine and the rotary indexing table then carries the assembly through the magnetizing and stabilizing operations. Good assemblies are ejected onto a belt conveyor which returns them to the inspection operation for boxing. The shaft is another part of our magnetic suspension. An automatic screw machine has been tooled to manufacture this shaft. It performs 10 operations including spotting, drilling, reaming, forming, knurling, and thread cutting. The shafts are automatically fed through a satterless grinder to remove the burrs. To complete the disc shaft, we must assemble and machine additional components. Here you see the machine which automatically feeds the shaft from a vertical magazine performing all operations in a straight line. It inserts the graphite bushing, spins to anchor the bushing securely, and countersinks and drills a guide pin hole. Both the countersink and drill are turning at 35,000 RPM. Here again, probes are used to ensure product quality with the machine automatically stopping if a malfunction has occurred. The shaft is then assembled to a disc with die cast metal. Once again, we are assembling an inner magnet to the disc shaft. In this case, however, the operator places the completed assembly on a horizontal magazine, which carries the assembly to a rotary index table for a subsequent magnetizing, stabilizing, and calibrating. The basic design of GE single phase meters permits these advanced manufacturing techniques which provide highest quality meters at lowest cost. Those parts not up to quality specifications are automatically rejected and the good assemblies fed to a chute allowing the operator to place them back in a special box. The inner magnet also requires additional machining and assembly. The highly critical diameter of this inner magnet is checked with an electro-limit gauge. A graphite bushing is inserted, staked into position, and then countersunk and drilled. This machine, too, operates with sensing probes to ensure product quality. The register is the scoreboard for the utility company and its customers. And because of the many and varied ratios, a great many different gears are required. Their proper assembly is of vital importance. These gears were previously inserted in a lathe collet and the inside diameter machined to a close tolerance. Automatic machines have been designed to receive the same range of collet sizes and a similar range of magazines. They will machine gears at a rate of up to 1,000 an hour to run out tolerances of 2,000th total indicator reading. One more step toward uniformly high quality. A ratio gear and shaft assembly is common to all registers. This machine orients an aluminum shaft, feeding it down the track and into a staking position. A friction drive is used to maintain proper pressure on the parts on the track and to ensure that the shaft is in staking position. Two gears are fed into position over the ends of the shaft and staked. After the staking is completed, the assemblies are ejected onto a disposal track where they are automatically checked for proper staking and gears. This track is so designed as to reject the occasional assembly which does not meet quality standards. A great variety of aluminum pinions are produced, first as a screw machine blank and later hobbed. This operation utilizes standard hobbing machines with Sintron feeders to orient, feed and maintain parts in the machine's magazine. To assure us that we have the proper number of teeth on our pinions, this machine automatically rejects any pinion that will not pass a drop gauge. A substantial contribution to product quality has been achieved through this operation. The gear and worm shaft used in the register mechanism requires close tolerances with respect to gear outside diameter, shaft concentricity, and gear location. The hub and gear are die cast into place by an automatic machine designed and built to ensure greater product quality.
concept of utilizing available equipment and providing aids for the operator, such as automatic feeders and other novel devices, is reflected in this unit. This machine counts out a precise number of laminations, adds a spacer and inserts two rivets to complete the potential coil sub-assembly. This has eliminated the need of manually counting the laminations, has doubled production per operator, and has certainly improved quality. The C-shaped Elnico magnets require many operations prior to die casting them into a single phase meter frame. This equipment was built to inspect the magnet gap in relation to the diameter of the center hole. We do this by feeding the magnets into a magazine, sliding it into position, and sensing the gap and hole with a plunger. The rejects are ejected into a separate container, and the remainder placed on a conveyor which carries them to the magnetizing and calibrating operation. Here again, the magnets are oriented and placed on a bucket on a chain conveyor. The magnet is magnetized and stabilized as it is carried through a coil. At this point, a magnetic flux density measurement is made with a magnetometer and recorded in a memory circuit. This operation is repeated, and based on data from the memory circuit, the magnets are then placed in one of 25 different containers according to strength. A new concept in moving material between operations has been applied in the assembly of the meter base. This was formerly a hand feed operation. The entire base assembly is now handled on this single piece of equipment, which offers the ultimate in flexibility while providing completed assemblies of superior quality. designed and built to completely machine the frames for our V-type polyphase meters. In effect, we are drilling and tapping 21 holes in seven different planes, counterboring two holes, milling four surfaces, and boring two bearing holes, all with sustained accuracy and repeat ability. Frames are located and clamped on individual pallets, which are hydraulically transferred to each station, located on pins, and clamped in machining position. The repetitive accuracy of the machine in respect to the drilling and bored hole locations is within plus or minus one thousandth of an inch. The diameter of the bored holes is held within plus or minus one half thousandth of an inch. An outstanding example of consistently high accuracy. Every S-base meter requires a socket. General Electric's operations at Summersworth include the design and manufacture of high quality sockets such as this Type S1. Conduit knockouts must be put in the socket after die casting. At Summersworth, this is done by partially shearing the material but still leaving it intact so that it can be completely removed at the time of installation. This hydraulic press was designed and built to perform this operation and assure clean break knockouts. In the clamp assembly operation, clamp and screw are joined and a pressure pad staked to the end of the screw. The screws are checked for proper length before being fed into position. The entire operation is performed automatically on one machine. The terminal block assembly consists of six parts. A block, terminal clip, nut, bracket, strap, and screw. A unique automatic machine produces either a right or left-hand sub-assembly, 
and then transfers it to the next position where it is assembled to the terminal block and anchored with a lock washer type nut. At Summersworth, there is a constant accent on accuracy. Meters are not only built to exacting specifications, but are thoroughly tested with advanced electronic equipment to provide a product that meets the most demanding quality standards. This bank of 24 final test stations represents an investment of one quarter of a million dollars in electronic test equipment. The final testing and calibration of our single phase meters is performed on these automatic, electronically controlled stations. And finally the seal, added by these inspectors, means that our general electric meter is certified for value in accuracy and performance an exclusive certification that establishes the quality of your meter within strict calibration and testing limits. That's part of the automation story at Summersworth. The quiet revolution that today helps us give you more watt-hour meter for your money than ever before. With greater assurance that each part and the whole product meet the high quality requirements of the electric utility industry.